Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I'm going to be making it about Crook. I feel this is how I personally run Crook. Um, and, and probably the best way to actually run the Crook build. One of the things that, you know, Crook really brings to the table is dodge instead of armor. It gives you armor value and armor regen. The armor regen is here. Not a very big percentage, but it does make a difference. In my personal build, I run around with 175 armor, and then, you know, 30% dodge, making it 40% when sprinting. To me, I'm able to survive in death sentence with this amount of armor and this amount of dodge. The reason being is if I go into my skills and I grab this skill called Frenzy, it gives me 25% damage reduction 25% damage reduction on 225 damage is 168 damage. With 168 damage being the damage that I'm working around now, 175.5 armor is enough armor for me to use the crook build. Armor value builds will run frenzy because of damage reduction, as seen in you know pretty much all builds that use armor value. Something that Crook specifically has is 230 HP life form. With 230 HP life form, 225 damage is a two shot. If I didn't bring Frenzy in this build currently, with just the numbers we have here, I would get one shot to my armor, two shots to my HP. In a build that focuses my armor and dodge, wouldn't it be you know a better idea to invest into the armor? So with Frenzy making my armor get two shots, and my HP get one, we flip the, you know, we flip the table sort of thing. You gotta keep in mind, 230 HP, being healed by first aid kits, you know, is, is a limited amount of heals. 230 HP, being healed by hostage taker, will take you minutes, you know, to get full life. 230 HP. By 225 damage, you know, you have to have a full circle of HP, you know, practically to actually get shot and survive. On the flip side, armor regens, you know, really fast. You have 2.7 second armor regen to, you know, get back 175 armor. Specifically in this build, it, you know, is, is the, the way you'd run this. In my, you know, my personal opinion. You'd run it like this. You have more armor. It is regened in seconds. You have the ability of damage reduction to make that armor actually, you know, tank two shots versus, you know, 230 HP that you'd have to wait minutes to get your, you know, HP back while having, you know, armor that's borderline useless until you've, you know, actually put Frenzy into the play. And this is not just inside of, you know, Crook. This is present in all armor value builds, such as like, you know, Anarchist, Armorer, etc. You could throw it in Sociopath, throw it in Crew Chief, throw it in Infiltrator. You could throw it in a whole bunch of, you know, armor style builds. Just the main focus is being able to regen armor faster than you can regen HP. Since I can regen armor, specifically in this build, and in something like Armorer, way faster the damage reduction is making you know it be a thing so to further on with the skills here we've got aggressive reload pairing together with my you know assault rifle and SMG being able to make it reload faster is always a benefit rifleman being able to you know snap to zoom when I'm trying to hit headshots since I have a berserker build headshots are going to be really effective snapping to zoom is going to you know help me be able to aim at the heads. Stable shot isn't really necessary, but something you've got to grab. This 8 stability, not really to me a difference maker. Resilience for that 15% recovery rate, and then um, shock and awe for the 25% paired with our already 10% from the perk deck. That, you know, grants us some pretty fast armor regen. Plus shock and awe aced to stagger shields, since we don't necessarily bring anything for shields like, you know, grenades or... A weapon for them we're going to be staggering the shields we bring a thing called bullseye 
Since we do have armor regen that is passively, we're going to bring an aggressive form of armor regen, being the bullseye. We grab the, the die hard for the armor amount for the damage reduction, and then the same thing for Iron Man for the armor amount. We went with body expertise basic in this build. One, as I stated before, we're going to be going for headshots with bullseye, with the snap to zoom skill. The so body expertise really isn't necessary, but we're using it in the sense of shields mostly, in the sense of if I don't hit a headshot, I've got you know some damage still being poured out. Something like surefire is what I'll always run in an assault rifle build due to the extra bullets and to the armor piercing rounds. The, uh, the armor piercing rounds do make a difference to me in the sense of just any gunfight I can get into. It's a heavy unit. Don't always got to go for a headshot, especially if it's not necessary. Like if I don't need to, you know, hit bullseye for example and save my bullseye. The fire control aced. I, I mean, personally, I just aced it. You know, you could go heavy impact, whatever. You could, you know, divvy out your skills a little bit. Personally, I just wanted the 12 accuracy and just went ahead and aced it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's open to be changed here. Um, I went personally with as much crits as I can without acing low blow. And then the same thing goes for Sneaky Bastard. Went for as much, you know, dodge as I could without acing it. Um, we do grab things like inner pockets to conceal that ballistic vest. We do grab things like optical illusions plus suppressors in our build. Don't have jokers, we use optical illusions um, in the sense of just giving us a time to react. Um, high value target for our dozers. Um, these two paired into you know to each other are usually is how you would see these be used. There is you know more high detection risk builds that are run in unseen strike. Usually you'll pair the two together though. Um, I do grab dodge in this build. The reason why um, dodge is a top tier survival, and this perk actually gives you um, dodge and armor value plus armor regen. So why would I not invest into something that the perk actually gives me? And then of course the frenzy. We grab the damage reduction. The limiting our life part doesn't really make a difference here. The berserker. For the extra damage output one you know specifically our rifles and smgs the bloodthirst for that extra reload speed plus being able to knife something and kill them on an instant practically and then martial arts you know just something you've got to grab when you get into this skill tree you are under arrest by the united states america fucking presidential campaign fbi agents <laughs> like god damn they're gonna investigate you man <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about on this stream, but um, here's some gameplay from Crook on my live stream. I may, as I'm watching and sitting here, I may, you know, start speaking over, you know, over top of the gameplay. Oh, and yeah, that, that, I, I do move that site back, don't worry. That site does get moved back. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't even hit anything. It's so far away. <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? Can't even see what I'm shooting at. So some of the things <clears throat> I just want to point out early on during this gameplay is watch my exposure. Watch how I limit myself to the enemies. Just because I have armor value and an armor amount to tank bullets doesn't mean I need to be, you know, face tanking everything. Is watch how I limit my exposure in a dodge build because any other dodge video that I'm going to be making, you know, will be following the same kind of guidelines of exposure, limiting myself to enemies. You see, just you know, try and pay attention to the amount of enemies that I peek and the amount of enemies that I'm exposed to. I try to tank. You know, when I do it, I try to tank anarchist with like a, an amount of armor as well. That's normal. Thanks for help with the rogue build. What's up, dude? I learned how to make better builds because of that. You're welcome. I, I do appreciate you coming back. 
That's how you would base, like, for example, that's how you would base all your builds, right? You would look for your survival skills and not just invest into something and just, you know, solely survive off something. You can't solely survive off, you know, purely just dodge, for example. You gotta bring other factors into that, like you have. I'm assuming you've brought, you know, some damage, you've brought some life regen, armor regen, which is the base of pretty much how you would make most of your builds. I'm glad I chose this clip, by the way. Um... Where the fuck is Raul? That is, uh, where the fuck is Raul? The, that is very true. Um, being able to look in a perk and be able to understand what skills that you're going to be needing and investing into. So just as an example with, you know, as that rogue build, as he was mentioning, one of the things that I mentioned to him was as rogue, you know, comes by default with a pretty high percentage of dodge. That isn't the thing that you solely rely on. And, you know, they were kind of... I'm saying not saying he was confused, but, you know, when people I tell that, they kind of get confused. Like, oh, what do you mean? Isn't that what the perk deck's all about is dodge? But in the same sense, yes, it is It is a perk deck about dodge. But the perk deck really shines when you start to bring other factors into it. Something like life regen, a life increase, armor regen from bullseye, extra dodge. Like, these are factors inside of the rogue build that I was, you know, pointing out and explaining that these are your survival skills being something like hostage taker to being allow you to constantly regen HP something like bullseye being able to when you do, you know, not dodge like when you do get shot you have bullseye to cover your HP back up something like um, partners in crime to increase his HP value when yeah, you, know you do get shot and you're left over with a bit more HP and when hostage taker starts to heal you you have you know a bit more HP to work with so it doesn't take as long for hostage taker to heal you to you know complete HP something that I did explain is inside of rogue with 70 dodge being able to run around and you know not get shot all the time hostage taker pairs almost perfect with that since you're able to you know survive not dying immediately That'll grant you time to survive, and within time, well, hostage taker's triggering. Something like extra dodge in a build that already brings dodge is definitely something that is valuable. Um, some players may be like, 10 dodge isn't worth it. You know, sneaky bastard aced, or, you know, sneaky bastard in general isn't worth it. But dodge in this game is a top tier survival, as I explained, for a reason. Five as you know, as I was about to say, little as five percent is able to dodge a you know a lot of bullets for you. Um, basing all your builds, like looking at your perk deck and being able to identify what the perk actually gives, and being able to invest and make you know better use of what the perk actually gives. So if you're making a build like Crook, for example. And it's got armor value, it's got dodge, it's got armor reach in. When you start to invest in to armor reach in, armor value, and more dodge, the end result to that is the build becomes really strong, as you see here. Rip Ned Luke, that was, that was his name. So that's unfortunate, dude.